Welcome to the Writer's Edge Podcast, a platform to share conversations about the health and wellness of horse and rider. I'm your host, Farley Schweigert. Hey y'all, it's Farley with Writer's Edge, and it's been a cold minute. It's definitely not been a hot minute, it's definitely been a cold minute. I hope you are making it through the the term I like to use is epic southern snowstorm. Um, So whether you are um, dealing with the aftermath of that or in winter weather as you're listening to this recording, I hope that you are warm, safe, and all your animals are tucked in and taken care of. And spring is coming. Spring is coming. I've got horses I mean, the Duns and the Palominos in the barn are starting to let go of some hair. But it's a sign. It's a sign that spring is coming. And also, I believe that next weekend is daylight savings time. So we'll be able to rejoice for that as well. So... I apologize for uh, skipping weeks again. It's it's just um, as things are restructuring, it's just been a little bit hard for this one woman show to juggle things. So I'll get back in the groove and, and I've got some new ideas on where to take this little podcast that could for you guys. And so I hope you continue to hang out with me and enjoy the conversation. Today, I want to talk about starting where you are with what you've got. It's not a sexy topic. It's not a tingly topic. It's starting where you're at. And I think that's important as we are moving into spring to have this conversation for several reasons as we're going into 2021. Um. First off, as we're coming off some late winter storms or continuing to have winter in parts of the country, it's um, when you're in when you're in that storm, when you're in the storm, whether it is an actual meteorological one or a personal one or you're rehabbing your horse or whatever storm you are in, your job is to weather that storm. Your job is to take care of everything the best that you can and get through it. And and that is part of being a champion for what that season is bringing you. And so it doesn't always look pretty and it's often not at all what you had planned. And it is often not at all what you want to be doing at that moment in time. Whether you are listening to this podcast in your earbuds while you're hand walking your horse in 20 mile an hour wind, or you're wrapping a leg, or you you are driving home late from work yet again and frustrated because you didn't get to spend time at the barn. Just know that it's a season and this too shall pass. And if you're coming out of a storm or you're getting that spring fever, you're getting that spring itch, take a minute, take a deep breath, and take stock of where you're at. Where you are at with your horse and their fitness level and their training level with your fitness level. Where are you at and what goals do you have? It is so easy to chase something that is shiny. We all do it. We're in the middle of the American semifinals right now in Fort Worth. And, you know, there are great storylines. There have been records set, records broken, records almost equaled. I mean, the competition is on display and it is fierce. And it's easy to get caught up and all that hype and be like, that's where I want to be. And I hope that you get there if that's what your goal is. But make sure you have that as a goal and then you take stock of where you're at right now. Because where you're at right now may be walking and trotting your horse. If your horse has been off all winter 
if he's been off for an extended period of time, if you've been hit and miss over the winter. Like for me, Tank, Tank the, the rope pony, Tank the cow pony, um, I got him out of the fourth trimester on his weight. <laughs> I got him down to the third trimester, and I could even see glimpses of it being second trimester for, for Tank. Um, he comes by his name naturally, by the way. And now, my poor guy, he's back in the fourth trimester. He is large and thinks he's in charge. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're bringing it back and walk trotting, walk trot lope, you know, very much, even though horses don't lose condition as fast as humans do, they still lose condition and we can often underestimate how much condition has been lost and often underestimate how fast we're bringing them back. And if we bring them back too fast, we can be prone to injury. If, um, and and make sure we are giving a graduated um, return to work routine along with rest and um, making sure these horses have um, the proper things they need. Good bedded stalls, clean water, um, enough hay. You know, don't forget when you're managing horses like we talked about the other day. Um, with our nutritionist from Kentucky Equine Research, horses don't need to go more than six hours without something on their stomach. So making sure your your hay routine or turnout time is monitored and, and you do the best you can. Again, you do the best you can with the circumstances you have, whether that's adding a slow feed hay bag or um, altering how you turn them out or, or, or whatever the case may be. So really, really taking stock of that because things are things are also starting to open up as well. Uh, the big news today was Texas um, lifting their their uh, capacity restrictions and their mask mandate, and having that happen along with um, possibly other states doing that whether whether it happens early spring or into the summer or wherever with things opening up and some return to normalcy make sure you're ready and your horse is ready and you're not chasing entry fees and big places to go without putting in the work so if you're having to come off of winter break or rehab break or, you know, you had to do the best you can through the height of the pandemic and pay attention to your job and, and change things around. So you haven't been in the arena like you wanted to because you were in a storm and you needed to take care of what uh, was right in front of you. Um, make sure you're realistic about what shiny things you want to enter because it, we're seeing an interesting I don't know if you want to call it phenomenon. I, I don't know what, but with the limited amount of event, events, everybody and their brother and sister are showing up to everything. And the competition, uh, the bar keeps raising no matter what event across Western performance uh, events that you are, are addressing. The competition keeps getting more fierce. It keeps growing, and uh, and you've got to be. I don't know what is beyond your A game, but we're we're fixing to find a new level to call that level. Cause, good gracious. So, take stock of where you're at, and doing the best you can with that. It. How is your fitness going? For me, I got, uh, about a month ago, I got some outside help on my fitness level because people need people. And for me, with all the projects I have going on between the Wild Rag business, this podcast, my day job, my horses, my goals, my um, inability to say no, my um, great ability to have eyes 
bigger than my stomach <laughs> or um, at least disproportionate for what I can get done in a day. Um, I got somebody to uh, help me with what's going on with me because turns out there's only so much of my own fitness, my own PT, I can do myself because it, it's very hard to PT yourself. And it's been an amazing journey, and I'm sure we'll have a chat uh, one of these days with him. And when I started that, I, I knew I knew something. I knew I had been messing with my own fitness for about um, for for a long time, and um, through some myofascial work and um, other things, I would get something better. And then I would fall victim to paralysis of perfection because I, as I was going through what I needed to work on, I would be like, oh, I should be better than this. I should be better than this now. Uh, I'm a physical therapist. This shouldn't have ever gotten this bad. I can't believe, you know, and then I would beat myself up because newsflash, <laughs> I'm a little hard on myself. Um, and uh, I would be all in my head about it. And so when I started this journey I, and, and I was um, doing my evaluation and, and telling him what my goals were and what, what I needed, what I wanted to do is my main thing for me and my own fitness level is I didn't want to have to think about it. I wanted to just go do it. I've had I've had clients say that to me and, and I've been able to provide that for them and you know it turns out that we all need people and so uh, uh, that's been uh, a great little journey that has started and uh, it turns out I'm human after all just quite tragic sometimes is um, that Superman syndrome it, it pops up it pops up hard sometimes and uh, being able to just move and feel what's going on with my body and how it's changing and, and what I need to do to make it better has been a, um, a, a fun journey so far, um, which is not the word I said after my workout tonight. Not, not at all. Um, but I was finally in a mindset and a position to where I could start this with somebody else. And it's taken me a very long time to get there, longer than it should have by all means, but just a, a very long time to get there. And it's okay because I'm starting where I'm at and I've got small steps equaling forward motion. I have a friend who is starting down that same journey as well. And she is starting where she, she's got a full plate. And she's starting where she's at and going forward from there. And it may be, um, it may be working with somebody. It may be signing up for somebody's group coaching. It may be signing up for somebody's pre-made workout plan um, and following it for a while. Or it may be just um, starting, starting walking, <laughs> um, three days a week, five days a week, start where you're at. Um, when I, uh, several years ago, when I kind of started my walking program, I would do it with my horse. I'd go hand walk my horse and that gave me time to bond and even non-injured that gave me time to bond with my horse. And, um, uh, I don't know, felt more productive to me than me just going out by myself. So there's a lot of different options of things that you can do for your fitness as well as your horses. But no matter, no matter where you're starting, set your goals, set your goals for the year and, uh, and set your actionable steps of how you're going to achieve those goals. And remember that it's not about getting to the shiny destination. It's about all the things that you learned on the journey. And gosh, I know that is cliche. That is so cliche. 
but cliches exist for a reason. And uh, if you if you look at what you can control and you focus on that and you focus on learning and you even learn in those small steps that seem boring and mundane and uh, any other fancy word I can come up with for boring and mundane. Um, it really, it really is uh, a fascinating, and it makes it fun. It, it, it just, for me, it's been being cooped up, and now that we are over this snowstorm here, we have water. We have water everywhere. We've got, we got another five inches after all the snow melted and more coming, and so we're still not fully back in the arena, but I'm getting on Tank and Charlie as I can. I'm working on me right now, and it will all continue to merge and come together. And the amount of things I learned today, just dealing with where I can be, was fun for me. For instance, I uh, collaborated with Nicole, who's been on the podcast several times, and we talked about the pelvic floor as it moves through a squat. And even she was like, oh my gosh, I've never been able to explain this this way to somebody until you and I are talking about this. And so we had a great PT nerd moment. Um, tonight, my workout, I was super frustrated because um, working through something for a few weeks should fix everything, right? It should, uh, um, a, a few weeks should fix years and years of bad habits and um, increased uh, weakness and poor motor patterns that, you know, took years to uh, develop. It should just be able to fix uh, real, real quick. Turns out it doesn't. Turns out it doesn't. But just being able to feel the progress and see how much more progress needs to happen has um, really been good. And because my mindset for my training and my body has really taken a turn, and although I don't always have more patience with myself, I'm finding more patience with myself like I do with my horses when they're in training. And allowing that space for my body to catch up and relearn a motor pattern and continue to move through that. So it's, it's just a really good spot because of all the factors and the things that happened to, to get me to this part of my journey. So I hope this conversation today helped you start making a mental list of um, where you're at and where you want to go for this year. And I hope it uh, gave you some hope and some bravery, if I'd be bold enough to say that, that you're not alone in where you're at. We're all trying to get to different places, and we're all starting at different places. And so I hope it gave you some courage to sit down and I'll hold your hand virtually. It can be scary having to be that vulnerable about exactly where you're at and where you want to, to go. But being truthful and making a plan from there will help you get there and, um, and have a better journey to that destination. So thank you for joining the conversation with me today. And as always, I will see you down the road. Thank you for listening to Rider's Edge podcast. For show notes and other thoughts, head over to ridersedgetherapy.com. If you would like to stay connected and continue the conversation, head over to my free Facebook group, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider. Thanks for continuing the conversation, and as always, I will see you down there.